and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'm going to be making a fold back gatefold card. And I have a piece of um, heavyweight cardstock here that's longer than it needs to be, but I've folded this at um, two and a half inches from one end. And I'm going to line up that fold with just below the cutting line of this die. And this is the outline die that will cut out um, the outer edge of this gorgeous uh, decorative panel, which you'll see in a moment. And I'm making a USA two size card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So this folded edge is along that five and a half length. So uh, this is a really nice size decorative die and it can um, nearly take up the entire card front of a USA two size card, which you'll see in a moment here. And so I'm lining it up this way so that I have um, that solid uh, outline shape because I'm going to make a nice um, kind of shaped edge to the fold back of my gatefold. And you can see one that's already assembled on my desk here. And so basically the um, section that's below that decorative uh, ornate edge is half of a USA 2 size, uh, the width of a USA 2 size card. So that measures 2 and 1 eighth. And then beyond that, I have an extra half inch um, glue tab. So here you can see I've finished die cutting and I'm just going to trim off this excess. So remember I scored this line at two and a half inches just to give myself some a uh, lot of wiggle room there to um, make sure that I get a full uh, edge. And then I'm going to, um, since this is longer, then I need, I'll go ahead and trim it down. So I'm going to, from that folded edge, I'm going to score at two and one half. So that's half of the width of my USA two size card. From that line that I just uh, scored, I'm going to give myself a half inch glue tab. And so I'll go ahead and um, fold and score my glue tab. And I'm going to uh, miter off the ends of it a smidge just so that when this gets glued down um, none of that glue tab there's no risk of that glue tab showing and I've already prepared my mats and layers so I have um, some solid black cardstock I have some gold pearlescent uh, which I've embossed um, with a I think it's a an older uh, Spellbinders embossing folder. I'll it, I'll link to it in the description box below if I can still find it. And so I've gone ahead and just embossed um, a couple of thin panels uh, here, just to back the um, my gatefold. And then if you combine the outline die that I used to cut that edge into my uh, gatefold with the decorative die, you get this piece here. And I've die cut that out of gold pearlescent card. So you can see how pretty that is. And imagine paper piecing back into that pattern, um, different colors. I think that would be that would look really really good too and wouldn't be too hard to do especially since there are some pretty large pieces there and so I'll um, make sure to get give everything a really really good burnish and make sure it's all uh, stuck down well and then I can get this panel um, attached to uh, the gate that's going to be visible behind um, the fold back. And so now that I have my two gates, then what I'm gonna do is I will attach that to uh, essentially what's going to be the inside of my card, but it's just a USA two size panel that's been cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And what I'm going to do is actually, um, I'm gonna, cut two panels and I'm going to sandwich my glue tabs in between those two panels. That way the glue tabs are completely hidden. 
If you want, um, you could always glue these glue tabs to um, the back of your um, panel here so that it's not visible from the inside. Um, but that means it will be visible from the back of your card, which, you know, if you don't care how the back of your card looks, then then you'll save yourself um, an extra panel of cardstock. But I wanted the back of my card to look um, nice and finished as well, and, and I want it to completely hide these glue tabs. So I'm actually gluing it to the inside of... Um, my card and so you can see the glue tabs are going to be on the inside here but I'll um, cut a piece of scrap paper just to fill the center of this so that uh, it's nice and level with uh, the glue tabs and then I'm going to add another four and a quarter by five and a half uh, panel to the inside and that's going to cover all of this up so this this is just a little piece of scrap um, and it's only getting glued into here to make a nice level surface um, because we do have that extra layer of cardstock with the two glue tabs on either sides. So, uh, so this is also optional. <laughs> um, but you know, white cardstock is not that expensive, so I figure you know it's it's worth it to have a a nicer finish. Um, especially on, on a card like this, that's kind of, um, a little bit blingy and, and special and ornate. So, uh, so I really wanted everything to be nice and, and polished and you'll see me finish that up in, in a moment. But before that, I'm going to actually, uh, die cut out one of these glimmered sentiments. So this is a sentiment from uh, this month's Glimmer of the Month, which has, uh, I think, six sentiment uh, foil plates. And so some of them, I really love that they are this sort of slanted cursive and some of them are rather large and kind of lengthy. So I feel like they can be good um, Verses for the inside of cards as well. And so that's how I'm going to use this one. So I've got this set of nested oval dies and I've already die cut the uh, uh, glimmered sentiment using one size. And then I'll go ahead and use um, the largest oval die and this sort of dotty uh, decorative border to cut a matte layer to go behind my sentiment. And um, I only put that, that oval there just to just to um, see how, how much of a border there would be. And, but I'm not using that inner oval to die cut. I'm just using those two dies, the outline die of the largest oval, and then um, that sort of pierced uh, dotty decorative die. And it die cuts out beautifully. Um, and so this will be a nice sort of uh, backing plate to my uh, inside sentiment. And the reason why I didn't uh, haven't yet added that uh, extra layer of um, uh, the inside uh, card panel is because I wasn't sure if I wanted what color I wanted it to be. So I wanted to figure out this component first and then um, and then decide if I wanted to back this with some color or leave it white. And so that's sort of why I, I haven't completely uh, finished off the inside of this, but I will add another um, layer or another panel here which will cover all of the glue tabs and everything. And when I do cut the panel um, that's going to go behind my two ovals here, keep in mind that because it has to fit between the two folds of the gate, that it can't really be the full four and a quarter. So you might have to just trim off uh, slivers until until you get it to fit just right. Um, and that's what I'm going to do here. I, I take off maybe a sixteenth of an inch at a time. Uh, I don't want to take off too much because I don't want a gap to, to be visible, but I need to take off enough so that 
these two gates fold down comfortably. And so that's why I had to bring out the trimmer again, because <laughs> um, a sixteenth wasn't quite enough. So I just took off another uh, uh, a little bit, and then now I'm going to take off another little bit. <laughs> So I think ultimately in the end, it might have been closer to an eighth of an inch is what I needed. But um, but I don't mind, you know, just taking little slivers off at a time, especially with my guillotine. It makes it really easy to just slice just, you know, um, like razor thin uh, strips off. And so I'm going to um, tack this down with some dry adhesive at the borders and uh just a light squiggle of liquid adhesive just to make sure that we have a nice permanent stick and then I'll um, I'll get my sentiment and um, the decorative uh, matte layer behind it stuck down as well and around the edges of my oval I I'm using a dotty tape runner that way I get adhesive uh, pretty much all the way to the edge and um, and then it's it can be a nice um, full stick around the edges and you won't get any lifting and I'll do the same with this piece too so this one this is a dotty tape runner here not not your solid tape runner and especially on this one because it does have that piercing detail the the dots will kind of you know uh, work around those two and it's not perfect but it's it's definitely better than um, than the solid tape runner and I do like having adhesive all the way around the edge and so I'll make sure to get that um, and I burnish from the back just so that I don't scratch you know my my glimmered uh, foiled sentiment so um, so that keeps it nice and um, protected and as a final detail, what I'll do is the uh, APG die of the month comes with some flower dies as well. And I did some really quick shaping. Um, you get four different size petals. Each die cuts out um, two petals. And what I've done here is I've just done some simple shaping and stacked three petals of the same size. To, um, to create this flower. I think it gives it a really nice rounded look. And I just took the smallest oval die from that uh, nested oval set. And this is really just going to be a way for me to create a magnetic closure um for this card because as you can see just naturally it, it wants to pop open and so I want it to try to stay closed as much as possible but I don't want to put a belly band because I just don't want to cover up this really um, beautiful uh, ornate pattern and so what I decided I'm doing a little bit of a dry fit here just to test the power of my magnet and and um and just to see if this is going to work. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't exactly 100% sure. And so um, I'll use this this oval die cut here just as a way to uh, have something to attach um, my magnet to. I'm going to cover most of it up with, as it turns out, I only needed the one flower. But I had two large ones and two um, of the next size down. And as I mentioned, you do get, I think it's four different sizes of flower petals. So, so you can really, you know, experiment with how you want to layer up your floral, um, your flowers, and you could definitely, um, do a lot of a lot more shaping than than I did, and add a lot more layers than I did too. Usually with three D flowers, I'll. Um, I'll add up to you know six layers of different size petals uh, to create a really full um, flower. So here's my magnet. I'm putting some double-sided score tape on it. It's the strongest uh, dry adhesive tape that I have. And so I'll get that attached to the half of the oval that's going to hang off from um, the right gate and extend onto the left gate and that's that's how it's going to become a closure because I'm only going to glue it down to the right half of the gate.
And so I'll uh, apply some glue here. And normally if I was making, let's say like a mini album or something and I use magnets, I would I would generally cover up the magnet from uh, the backside. But in this case, I'm actually not going to cover it up. It's it's not going to be visible until you open it. Um, but also because it has to go through so many layers, I've got the um, heavyweight cardstock and the decorative gold pearlescent paper that it has to go through. I don't want to add more paper layers in between these two magnets because that's just going to weaken um, the attachment between the two magnets and it's not going to hold as as firmly. You can see it just barely holds. It's still kind of opening a little bit but it's it's still keeping the sentiment hidden which is mostly what I was looking for and so so um, so that's why I didn't want to cover the back of this oval piece to um, to give that like a neater finish. I, I prefer in this case for the functionality to really uh, work as opposed to um, uh, the finish. So I'll go ahead and what I like to do is I just put my magnet on this little I guess it's like a little spatula that came with my Cricut and um, or maybe it was a different set but uh, I use it for weeding and stuff and I like to just slide it behind that left panel until it finds the its pair um, and then it'll just kind of snap in place and as you can see um, this is the largest flower and it it pretty well covers that that oval uh, almost completely. Some of the oval is still visible, especially on, on both ends because our um, the flower is more circular in shape. But um, I did add a little sort of a, a glitter um, pearlescent um, gemstone to the center of the flower. And it's really nice black glitter. So I think it kind of pulls in the, um, the black matte layer that we have on... Um, either uh, sides of the gate and I think it just um, makes it all look a little bit more cohesive. So you can see here that magnet um, attaches and then you can very easily open it and um, get this really awesome sentiment on the inside. So that's my uh, card today featuring the APG die of the month for February 2022. You can check out the details for uh, this club and all of the other Spellbinders clubs of the month in the description box below. If you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I post them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!